Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday and it's going to be a wonderfully cold day. I'm looking forward to it. First of all, let's get coffee and let's rock this day. Ah, coffee. I work with a few people who, um, they don't drink coffee. I don't know how that works. All right, the day is over. We made it. And again, I had a really hard time getting any filming done during the day today. So there's a few things that have changed in the uh, vlogging ecosphere of my life that has made it really hard for me to get motivated to get content. I love the editing process. My favorite part is getting all the video and seeing how I can get it together in nine minutes or less, sometimes more. But <clears throat> getting the video is the hardest part because during the week, <clears throat> You know, right now we're back from Christmas. It is go time and I'm really focusing in the classroom. And so when I get home, I'm exhausted. So there's not a whole lot going on during the week. Uh, I also have a student teacher that's now in my room every day. And so um, pulling the camera out while I'm filming just seems a little bit more odd than normal. When it was just me in the classroom, I'd throw it on a table while I'm doing a writing lesson and then I would just keep teaching. It would take an extra two seconds in my day. But now that I have a student teacher, it just seems odd to me to add that camera while I also have someone else watching me. I don't, I'm gonna have to get over that for sure. But um, also after um, my uncle passed away and we had the funeral, I've just been really like lost when it comes to the vlog. I don't really know where to take it and what to do, so I'm kinda, just having to recenter myself and get back to get back to getting you guys some good content so that I can edit it and really make some really good quality vlogs coming up. Um, I'm gonna refocus again on doing some teacher tips and um, focusing on some things I do in the classroom and then when I travel, I'll really do the travel video. So like for example, this weekend, I'm going to Dallas for a training for 26 hours. So that'll be something that I can vlog. But in just a second after I do my report cards, um, someone asked me to do a little bit of information about behavior. So I'm gonna do a real quick um, behavior tips that I use in my classroom with Love and Logic. So first, I gotta get these report cards done. All right, I'm about to get out of here, but I wanted to do just a really quick um, overview of my behavior. I know I've done this before, but a couple people have asked me to kind of go through it. So first, I'm gonna show you my Love & Logic poster that I keep up um, as just a kind of a reminder of the things that I should be doing and I should be saying. So let me show you that, and I'll go a little bit slower this time than I did last time. All right, so hopefully that was um, a little bit slower this time so that you could either see it, slow it down, pause it, whatever you need to do. So let me just go through some of the tips that I have that I use in Love & Logic that really help my classroom run smoothly. So the number one thing that I use in my classroom that I think is the most important thing is to build a relationship with your children. I meet my kids every morning at that door, either shake their hand, give them a you know pound and blow it up, give them a high five, give them a hug, whatever they want, so that I'm constantly building that relationship. Kids will go so much farther for you if you build that relationship with kids. Um, <clears throat> so they say always start with empathy. If you use empathetic responses all the time, it really helps um, to keep there from being a divide between you and your child. Imagine if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or spouse 
and you come home and you've had a terrible day and the first response is, well, you should have um, done this, this, and this, and they start fixing that problem immediately. It makes you mad versus, oh man, that's such a bummer. You had such a terrible day. Tell me about it. Immediately, your heart opens, your mind opens, and you're thinking. So start with empathy. Number two, describe what you will do. So one of the big things in love and logic is I focus on the things that I can control. I can control what I will do. I can't control the volume of my kids' voices. And if I say, you need to turn your volume down, I can't control that. So if they buck me on that and they say no, I can't make them do that. But I can say, I'd be glad to go to recess when everyone is lined up with a zero voice. I can control when we leave the room to go to recess. So focus on things that you can control because then there's not that power struggle. Another one is whose problem is it? Okay, focusing on is this my problem or is this a child's problem? I think a lot of the times we want kids to do things and we focus on problems that is not our business to control. If it doesn't affect me, it's not my problem and I need to let the kid solve that with either the other kids or with their parent or whatever that is. Giving kids the responsibility of, hey, that's your problem, you need to solve it. Now, I can give them some ideas. You know, would you like to hear some um, ideas that other kids have tried? I can give them ideas, but I shouldn't solve their problems. Um, another one, this is a huge one. Listen to me when I say this, choices. Overload your either kids at home or your kids in the classroom with choices. The more choices that you give to your kids, the more control they have. And when their control tank is full, it's easy for me to make a withdrawal. You know, we say we're making deposits into the bank of control. And then when it's my turn to make a withdrawal, it's not painful. If the kid comes to you from a home that they have zero control, maybe the kids are going through um, a divorce with their parents, you know, it's, it's chaos at home. They need that control at school. And if you don't give it to them, they'll take it from you. So, um, you know, you want to line up at the beginning of the line or the end of the line? Do you want to do the odd problems or the even problems? Um, do you want to read one book or two book? Do you want to do this in five minutes or 10 minutes? If you just constantly overload them with choices, it makes your life a lot easier. Next up, let empathy and consequences do the teaching. Again, don't be the bad guy that is delving out all of these consequences. Be the person that stands next to the kid and views the natural consequence of their action. And you're working with the child on how do we help get this solved. Um, don't rub it in. That's a huge one. If you've given empathy, you've given choices and you're on a roll and you're rocking and then right at the end, you say, I told you so, that entire behavior lesson is empty. It's useless. If you rub it in, it immediately becomes your fault instead of the natural consequence. So don't rub it in. An overall theme, if you can walk away with two things of my really quick behavior tips is number one, the relationship and building that relationship starts with empathy. And number two, control. The more control that you can give on your terms to the children, the less painful it is when you have to take the reins or take the control in situations. And again, what I always tell my student teachers or other teachers when I'm doing Love and Logic is think about how you want your spouse or your partner or your siblings or your family to treat you. And don't expect your kids to put up with something that you wouldn't put up with from a spouse. You know, I would never yell at my wife and tell her what to do. I might ask for some help. I might request her to do it, but I'm never going to tell her what to do. Just the same thing as I don't want to be told, hey, this needs to be done right now. I want to be told, hey, I need to get this done sometime today. Would you mind getting to this before you leave work? Absolutely. Same thing. I'm not going to tell a kid to do it right now unless it is like super important. I'm going to give them some control in the situation. So empathy and control, the two things you need to take away from my real quick behavior with love and logic. Um, that was my teacher tip of the day, which I haven't done in a little while. But those of you that ask for me to do those, thank you so much. Let's get out of here.
All right, I am home. I'm gonna hang out with my lovely wife, and what do I see her catch her doing? A new purse. You have a problem, baby. We gotta talk about your purse addiction. Well, it was on sale. It was on sale. <laughs> Don't shame me. I'm not shaming you, I just think it's cute. <laughs> I mean, says the man holding a very expensive camera. Yeah, Mr. A drone. drone. <laughs> okay, I can buy five of those. I guess anything. Um, well, we're gonna hang out. I think we're gonna try to watch Sherlock, Sherlock came out today. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow.